Now, finally, we want to see some code, how an event driven and event source application is realized using Java. And therefore, I want to introduce the scalable coffee shop in the same way like I, I did in theory in the last episode and now in with code. So as I told you, the scalable coffee shop is divided in three responsibilities, the barista, the beans and the orders. And for now, all these are deployed in these three deployment artifacts. And you could, as I said, divide the right side from the read side and scale them individually. But for this approach, um, it's actually the right, both write and read side per module is in one um, deployment artifact. But having that said, they are separated logically using the events. Um, so they could be split up equally well. But let's start. So as you see, there are a lot of events here. These are basically the domain objects of the application from order placed, order started and so on and so forth. And then on the orders module, we have the services to write and read orders. So let's start from the outside with the REST interface that's done uh, using JAXRS. Here it's an order resource that has a command service and a query service. And the order copy, of course, only is allowed to write something. So it will write a new order to the system and then just return the URI that has, has been created. So um, with a status um, to, to accept it, HTTP with the location header back in order um, to let the client then follow later on the newly created order. And to, to accept it tells the client, okay, everything has been accepted here. It's fine if it's not a bad request or a server error. And you will come, you can come back later and our resource will be created later on because accepted only says, okay, I, I understood the request and everything else. Let's see. And then the request goes to the order command service to place a new order. And that does actually not much. It just creates the new event order placed with the order info and the order info is just what the customer wanted to have. So this is all the information that has been sent by the client, which type of coffee do I want? Um, for example, we have espresso, we have pour over coffee or French press and which beans do you like? The bean origin can be um, provided as well. And this order info then gets wrapped into the event because the order has been placed. And since that method has been called here, and there could be some validation logic and so on and so forth. But first of all, as we said, we want to have the validation if there are enough beans available, for example, later on in the process. That means for now, we just accept the request. The order has been placed. I mean, that's a fact. If it will be accepted later on, that's another story. But now we say, okay, the order is in the system. Having that said, we have the event producer that will, I will show later on. This is actually the, the connection to our event store. And then it's avoid method. So if everything's fine, then we know, okay, it worked. The order info already included the generated UUID that has been generated once. And then we are done. The client gets a response back and come back, can come back later. That's it for now. So what does then happen? The event producer will publish an event. I will show that later on. And using Java EE, we can use a helpful mechanism using CDI, namely events. And CDI events are uh, really powerful in terms of that they can be qualified using the, using the types or using qualifiers. And we can somehow, um, in a decoupled way, control where we want to consume and publish the events. So that event producer class will then publish events that can be consumed. And having that said, and what I already explained, we have two type of consumers, one that only updates a view and internal representation, for example, of our orders, and one that will handle other new events, mainly from outside of our module. 
from outside of our bounded context that will then potentially trigger new commands and therefore trigger new events. In our system, that now means we have an update consumer. So what happens? We have an internal representations of the orders that is now used for both the command side and the query side. It could be totally split up. But here, one update consumer handles um, both. And actually, you already see the, the Kafka integration there. But for now, what's interesting that it will fire some events, some Kafka events. And actually, that consumer will then be connected to the coffee orders. And that's the view representation of what we have. Um, one short notice about DDD, Domain Driven Design, because that's actually often done together with CQRS event driven architectures and all these buzzwords. Actually, we don't need necessarily need um, domain driven design terms here like aggregates and so on and so forth. And depending on the framework you're using, sometimes that doesn't even perfectly match that model. So for example, what we have here is one singleton that is the store for all the coffee orders. Singletons sounds like it doesn't scale and EJBs are evil anyway, right? Um, no, actually, this is probably the most simple way to build a memory based cache in an enterprise application that doesn't need to be distributed. Because this is the view representation of our application here of that single instance, it could be persisted, it could be a later on, and um, it could be um, persisted in a database. And I will um, explain that later on. But for example, if you only want to store that in the memory, then this is perfectly fine to have a singleton bean with bean managed concurrency that is important otherwise um, all the method calls can cannot be done um, concurrently and we want to ensure the concurrency using a concurrent ha hash map and that is for what we want to do here the most simple and yet quite scalable approach to do that in one application and having that said this orders singleton um, observes for the events. So for all the order events that are happened, that are happening, it will update the internal representation. And that works that way that it will always um, get an order from the map and then accept the event. And in a consumer and the consumer because this is how our coffee order looks like and it has an internal state representation because what we want to give to the outside world to the user is the current information how our order looks like so what did the customer actually order espresso from somewhere from Ethiopia and what is the state of our order is it already being made how long do I have to wait and so on and so forth so the coffee order state has some states of which it currently um, is in. For example, if it's just been placed or if it accepted, that means it will be done and so on and so forth. If the bean pro, uh, brewing process has been started and that is done using that state representation. And uh, this is applied for each and every event that comes in for our um, order ID. So we take the events and then apply them. That means if the order has been started, no matter where that event comes from, it will come from the event handler in that same module, but that doesn't matter. We just know if that order has been started, that's a fact and that's immutable. It has happened in the past. So we can rely on that. We can actually update our order to that state. And this is how it works. And then the internal representation will be updated and then if you use that representation for either, either validating or reading, depending on where you are, you uh, will ensure that you have a correct state because of all the events that have been applied. And this is basically how the idea works. 
and how it's implemented using um, Java EE with CDI events that are actually really helpful in that case. And having that said, the right side for that does a similar thing. Now that it just only will consume events that are um, handled from the outside. That means if we placed an order, like um, you, uh, you saw in the last episode, then the order has been placed and then we will validate the beans. And finally, the beans module will say, okay, either order beans validated, that's fine, or failed because of some reason, in that case, beans not available, then we have to update our order because, well, now something has to happen. So either we can start, that's great, or the beans um, were not there, then at least we say, okay, sorry, it's not possible and we have to cancel the order. And this is what happens there. So basically we call then the command service because the events have, have happened, that's a fact again. And then we can say, okay, now we have to go further. So accept the order and then something else happens. In that case, we publish another event, the order accepted event that actually only tells that our order now has been accepted that's a fact and this module, the order write system, is responsible to updating the order to order accepted. And then later on that order accepted event will be handled somewhere else. In our case from the barista that they now can start the bean brewing process. And this is how the event handler works. The important thing is that these um, events have to be handled only once and exactly once in your whole system. So if you have several instances of, for example, the orders module of the orders service, then you have to make sure that the event handler is handled only once because then the event that events that will be published will go to the event store. And if you have three instances and all three say, okay, order beans validated and then say, order accepted, order accepted, order accepted, that doesn't make sense. So you only have to have that once. Having that said, the update consumer has to um, fire the ev events for each and every system. So the, um, the singleton here that updates the state, that has to be done in each and every instance. Because every instance has its own representation, however that may look like, and that has to be updated using the events. So that has to be... Um, consumed for e in each and every system and the event handler side has only to be consumed once. And now I hope you got the idea how the Java EE site architecture works using EJB, CDI, managed beans and CDI events. And now the other thing is how we connect using Kafka here.